Did you just finish reading Under the Whispering Door and now want to know what to read next? Or perhaps you have read The House in the Cerulean Sea and want to know if there are any other TJ Klune books that you should be looking for. If so, then this video is for you. Hi, my name is Paige, and over the course of the last year and a half or so, I have read this many TJ Klune books. I've been asked a few times by friends and commenters which TJ Klune book they should pick up next, and now that I've read around 18 or so of his books, I feel like I know enough about them to confidently guide you in the correct direction. I am trying to make this video as clear and easy to follow as possible, so there are timestamps for every single book that I have read so far that include a brief summary as well as major content or trigger warnings that I believe are in each book. I've also timestamped the guide to TJ Klune, which is where I will tell you what order I think people should read books and what book to read next. And finally, in the timestamps, you will see my official ranking of all of the TJ Klune books that I have read so far. If at any point in this video you find it helpful, please give me a thumbs up. I've worked very hard hard to put this video together for you all and I would really appreciate the support. And also while you are watching, please leave an emoji riddle in the comments that describes one of TJ Klune's books so I can guess the title. Or if you don't want to come up with your own riddle, you can go ahead and guess which book I am referring to with these emojis. Alright, I think that is all you need to know about this video. Feel free to skip around to whatever you would like to watch and I hope you enjoy! Bear Otter and the Kid is TJ Klune's first published novel. It was published in 2011 and has an average Goodreads rating of 4 .19. This story follows Derek McKenna, also known as Bear, and he was abandoned three years ago by his mother and left to raise his six-year-old brother Tyson. Bear completely took on the role of guardian and gave up pretty much most of his life to care for Tyson and make sure that Tyson is raised to the best of Bear's ability. Bear does have a tight-knit group of people. He has his neighbor, he has his girlfriend, and his best friend Creed, and he's been content to just take care of the kid, which is what he calls his younger brother, and just continue on as life is. But one day, Creed's older brother, who is called Otter, but his real name is Oliver, comes back into the picture and it is hinted at that Bear and Otter had a past and there is a reason why these two stop speaking. So Otter coming back into Bear and Tyson's life kind of stirs things up, but Bear has a lot of trust issues. He doesn't think he can open back up to Otter the way that he once had, and he does not feel like Otter is going to actually stick around in his life. So this is a story about a small group of people who have come together to form a family, and also Bear overcoming his insecurities and his fear of abandonment and trying to let Otter back into his life. The characters and character relationships are definitely the best part of this book, and it is the first book in a four book series, but this is the only one of that series that I have yet to read. Into this River I Drown was published in 2013 and it has an average rating on Goodreads of 4.13. The warnings for this one would definitely be graphic violence as well as an on-screen character death that I believe could be pretty triggering. There is discussion of depression and a lot of heavy discussions about grief and reeling with the grief of a loss of a parent. This book is set in Roseland, Oregon and it follows Benji Green. Five years ago he lost his father in a tragic car accident but Benji does not believe that his father actually died by accident. Benji is suffering with his grief still even after five Five years and he is trying every day to just go through the motions and move forward with his life but he is so caught up in wanting to figure out how his father died and who may or may not have killed his father. Often when Benji is feeling at his very lowest, he often feels like somebody is watching over him. He feels a breath on his neck or a hand on his shoulder and he has convinced himself that it's his father sticking around and trying to watch over Benji and he tries to hold on to that fraction of hope that his father is still with him. One day while he is visiting the site of his father's death trying to figure out what could have happened to his father, he sees something from the sky and finds a man laid out on the side of the riverbed with burnt wings on the ground. This fallen figure is actually Caliel, the guardian angel of Roseland. He goes by Cal and he tells Benji that he is here because he heard Benji's prayers and knew that Benji really needed somebody to look after him. So this is a story about a fallen angel who is there to protect a man who is reeling with his grief, trying to figure out what happened to his father, and it gets pretty dark pretty quickly. There are betrayals and death and really scary circumstances that Benji finds himself in and Cal is 
is trying his best to protect Benji through all of it. It is probably one of TJ Klune's angstiest stories. It heavily deals with grief and missing a family member, but it is a very beautiful story about a son's love for his father, as well as the love between a fallen angel and a human. Tell Me It's Real was published in 2013. It has an average Goodreads rating of 4.26, and the only major warnings in this one would be crude humor and language. Tell Me It's Real is essentially a story about love at first sight. We follow Paul Auster, who is a quirky kind of man. He does not speak before he thinks. He talks himself into a lot of sticky situations because he doesn't always say the right thing, and some of the things that he says, I will say, are quite offensive here and there. But he does have a tight-knit group of people in his life. He has his best friend Sandy, his two parents, and his grandmother, and all of these people see the good in Paul. They see him as a wonderful man, and they want the best for him. But Paul lacks a lot of self-confidence and does not believe that he is deserving of a beautiful love story. One day, on his 30th birthday, he is at the bar that his best friend Sandy always performs as a drag queen, and Paul looks across the room and sees the most beautiful man that he has ever seen. And the beautiful man does try and pursue Paul, but Paul does not believe that beautiful man is being sincere. Fast forward to Paul working and realizing that the new guy at work is actually beautiful man from the bar. Beautiful man from the bar, his name is Vince, and Vince relentlessly pursues Paul. He really wants to get a date with Paul, but Paul does not believe him. He believes that Vince is trying to Freddie Prince Jr. him, a la she's all that, and thinks that no one that good looking would want to actually date Paul. Still, Vince pursues. And one day, Paul hits Vince with his car and has to take care of Vince a little bit and eventually Vince wears him down and gets the date with Paul and so overall this is just a story about their whirlwind romance and their love at first sight that comes along with that. It is one of the more humorous stories, lots of jokes often. It doesn't take itself very seriously at all, but the one thing I will say about this one is it is of its time. It is written in 2013 and a lot of the jokes just don't really land like they might have back then. So oftentimes I do think that the jokes border on very offensive to just plain offensive. So this is one to definitely look out for, read any reviews for the offensive things that are said in this one and consider if you would like to read it. This book is also the first in a four book series, but I have only read the first one. The Tales from Verenia starts with The Lightning Struck Heart, which was published in 2015. It's followed by A Destiny of Dragons, which was published in 2017, The Consumption of Magic, which was also published in 2017, and A Wish Upon the Stars, which was published in 2018. The series has an average Goodreads rating of 4.53, and the major warnings in this one would be that it is his most explicit work. It also has graphic depictions of violence, as well as character deaths later on in the series. The series follows Sam of Wilds, who is a young wizard apprentice, and he wants to become the youngest wizard in all of Verenia's history. Currently, he is apprenticing for Morgan of Shadows, who is the current wizard advisor for the King of Verenia. And in the future, the son of the king, Prince Justin, will one day take the throne and he will need a king's wizard which one day will be Sam. The story starts off with Sam getting into quite a lot of trouble as usual with his gay hornless unicorn best friend Gary and his other best friend the giant named Tiggy. The story follows the three of them as they have to go on an adventure because Sam has gotten them into a bit of trouble. A dragon has kidnapped Prince Justin and they need to go and rescue the prince. But their adventure is being joined by Knight Ryan Foxheart, who happens to be Sam's greatest crush, but he is also engaged to the prince. So it is a journey of Sam and his friends, plus his crush, trying to track down some dragons and save the prince of Verania. A Destiny of Dragons, The Consumption of Magic, and A Wish Upon the Stars expand further on the story and show us that there are some things that are hiding in the shadows as well as explains to us what the connection with Sam and all of these dragons that keep popping up in his life seem to be. The series is an absolutely hysterical story of magic and romance and it has explicit humor, lovable characters, and oftentimes heartbreaking plot points, but it is a wonderful story and it is probably my top rated TJ Klune series. How to Be a Normal Person was published in 2015. It has an average Goodreads rating of 4.34 and I don't think that there are any major warnings for this one. It does discuss the death of a parent as well as has a little bit of smoking in this one so if you are not a fan of anyone smoking anything recreationally this might not be for you. 
This story follows Gustavo Tiberius, who is living in 2014. He owns a video rental shop. He has a flip phone. He owns a pet ferret. He reads encyclopedias for fun. He is just an odd guy, but he has a very rigid routine that he does not break apart from. His life is exactly the way he wants it to be. It is in his nice, comfortable little bubble. And one day, going about his routine, on his way to get his morning black coffee, he goes into the coffee shop and meets Casey Richard. And Casey is instantly taken by Gustavo. He thinks that Gus is just the greatest guy ever. But one day, Gus does overhear Casey mentioning that Gustavo is just a little strange, a little absurd, and Gus does not want to be called absurd. So he decides to buy the internet, look up how to be a normal person, and follow the tips and tricks that the internet says. Still, no matter what he does, Casey still seems to think that he is just a really kooky character, and Gustavo starts to realize that maybe being a little weird is not so bad after all. It is just a really lighthearted, silly romance, a really fast and easy read, and a really sweet story about what it means to even be normal. Is anybody normal anyway? Also, the story includes really great asexual representation. Withered and Seer was published in 2016 and has an average Goodreads rating of 4.23. The major warnings on this one would be graphic violence, body mutilation, as well as mentions of cannibalism. The story is set in post-apocalyptic America a hundred years after the destruction of humanity. We follow Cavallo, who is a solitary man who does not want to be a part of civilization. Cavallo's only two companions are a mutt named Bad Dog and a sentient robot named Sirs. One day while hunting, Cavallo crosses over into the Deadlands, which are run by a group of people called the Dead Rabbits, which are said to be cannibalistic murderers. While he is in the Deadlands, Cavallo ends up capturing one of these Dead Rabbits, and he refers to this man as a mute psychopath. For some reason, he decides to take this man prisoner because he feels like he is important to the Dead Rabbits and some secrets that are within their community. And there are a lot of people interested in getting this dead rabbit under their own control. The story is a darker story and has a really haunting atmosphere since we are following Cavallo who is slowly losing his grasp on reality since he has been without human contact for a very long time. Withered and Seer is the first book in a two book duology and despite TJ Klune saying that he had plans to write another book in the series, he has since changed his mind and decided to no longer continue the series. The Green Creek series begins with Wolf Song which was published in 2016. It's followed by Raven Song, which was published in 2018, which was then followed by Heart Song, published in 2019, and finally we have Brother Song, which was published in 2020. The average Goodreads rating for the series as a whole is 4.45, and major warnings for this series would be graphic violence, as well as major character deaths, and lots of grief and suffering in these ones for sure. It is heavy on the angst. The series begins with Wolf Song, and we meet Ox Matheson at 12 years old when he is being abandoned by his father, and his father tells Ox that he is just not going to amount to very much in his life. But with the love of his mother, Maggie, as well as bonding with Gorda Livingstone, who is the in-town mechanic, Ox begins to start to find his own family through these people. But a couple years later, as Ox is 16 years old, a mysterious family moves in down the street from him and they are called the Bennett family. And one day, Ox happens to meet the youngest Bennett brother. He is 10 year old Joe Bennett and Joe is instantly connected to Ox. And through the story, we figure out why Ox is so drawn to this family and what his connection really is with this werewolf family because we do find out that the Bennets are in fact werewolves and Ox is living in a world with witches and werewolves. The one warning I will give for this book is that it does have a decently large age gap especially because it follows Ox and Joe's romance and they do meet when Ox is 16 and Joe is 10 but there is no romantic connection with them until Joe is about 17 or 18. So that is something to be warned of as you go into this book. I won't go into any spoilers for the next three books but this one is Ravensong and it follows Gordo Livingstone who is kind of like a quasi father figure slash uncle slash best friend to Ox in the first book and this book goes over Gordo's history with the Bennets prior to Ox ever meeting them as well as Gordo's point of view of some of the events that happened in Wolf Song and also carries on with the story in the Green Creek series. Heart Song is the third book in the series and it follows Robbie Fontaine who is kind of like a lone wolf who has found himself entangled with the Bennett family and it's about his story as well as furthering all of the events that have happened in the past two books. And finally in Brother 
other song, we get to follow one of the Bennett family members. And we are following Carter Bennett, who was the older brother to Kelly Bennett and Joe Bennett. And in this, we see the conclusion of the Green Creek series. And it is definitely heartbreaking at some points, but it is a wonderful wrap up to the series as a whole. This is a really beautiful series about witches and werewolves and found family. It is heavy on the angst, but it also has light moments with a lot of humor. But the characters in this series overall are what shine the most because they come together and they form the most beautiful family unit I have probably ever read. This is a wonderful, beautiful series and I could reread it over and over and over again. The Bones Beneath My Skin was published in 2018 and it has an average Goodreads rating of 4.4 and there are really no major warnings for this one aside from graphic violence at some points and some character deaths. This book is set in 1995 and it follows Nate Cartwright whose parents have just recently died. He's not in contact with his brother and he just recently got fired from his job as a journalist in Washington DC. In their death, his parents left him a cabin that he used to frequently go to when he was younger. Because of all of the change that has happened in his life, he decides that he wants to get away to the cabin and just completely cut himself off from the real world and figure out what he's going to do next in his life. Upon his arrival at the cabin, he learns that there are two people squatting in it, an older man named Alex Weir and a 10-year-old girl who calls herself Artemis Darth Vader. Alex claims that he is protecting Artemis from somebody, but will not give any details to Nate about who they are running from. The story is about Nate getting entangled with Alex and Artemis and trying to figure out why Alex is willing to risk everything to protect this little girl and what makes her a little bit different. It's a beautiful story about found family and the ways that we can bond with each other even if we might come from different galaxies. The House in the Cerulean Sea was published in 2020. It has an average Goodreads rating of 4.48 and the only major warnings in this one would be references of child abuse and child abandonment. The story follows Elena Baker who is a caseworker for Dykeme which is the department in charge of magical youth and one day he is sent on a highly classified case out to the Marcius Islands where he has to determine if the children in this orphanage are going to bring upon the end of the world and how dangerous they actually are and what threat they pose to the world. At the orphanage, Linus meets a gnome named Talia, a were Pomeranian named Sal, a wyvern named Theodore, a green unidentified blob named Chauncey, he meets a sprite named Fee, and also the Antichrist Lucy. He also meets Arthur who is the caretaker of all of these children at the orphanage. While Linus is staying on the island he learns about all of these children as well as Arthur and Zoe who are the ones who are mostly taking care of the children. Zoe is another sprite who lives and protects the island so he sees the dynamic between all of these children and their two caretakers and he starts to understand a lot more about family and how family is the people that you choose in life and he breaks out of his very predictable shell. He is not a particularly adventurous man and he lives a very day-to-day -day structured life and meeting these children and this found family brings out a side of him that he never thought was there. It's a really beautiful story about found family and acceptance. The Extraordinaries was published in 2020 and it was followed by Flash Fire that was published in 2021. The third book in the series is slated to be released in summer of 2022. Currently on Goodreads, the average for this series is 4.22. There are no major warnings for this series so far, but there was some controversy when the first book came out about how TJ Klune portrayed cops in his series, and he has since come out with a blog post and has tried to rectify how he portrayed them in his second book. So I will leave the link to the blog post in the description if you would like to check that out. The Extraordinaries is the first book in the series, and we follow Nicholas Bell, who is a young teenager with ADHD and an obsession with Extraordinaries, which are essentially superheroes. His obsession with these extraordinaries goes as far as to him writing fan fiction about his favorite extraordinary named Shadowstar. One day, Nick actually has an encounter with Shadowstar himself and Nick realizes that he does not want to be normal anymore. He wants to be an extraordinary so that him and Shadowstar can live happily ever after. So he does everything in his power to turn himself extraordinary and his three best friends, Seth, Gibby, and Jazz, try and talk him out of it a little bit but also support him in his attempts at becoming extraordinary. And along the way, Nick ends up getting himself a little mixed up 
with Shadowstar and Shadowstar's nemesis Pyrostorm. In book two, we see that Nick is still mixed up with some of these extraordinaries and what in the world is going on with that? This series is filled with humor and a really great friend group as well as some twists and turns that you probably won't see coming. As I am filming this, Under the Whispering Door is TJ Klune's newest book. It is being published in 2021 and currently on Goodreads has an average rating of 4.42. The book does have trigger and content warnings at the beginning, but I will say that this one heavily discusses death. It is death by murder, death by suicide, death of a child, death from terminal illness, death of an animal, death of a grandparent. Very many forms of death and grief are discussed in this book. So if that is something that you are sensitive to, I would look up any reviews that you can to figure out if this book might be triggering for you. Under the Whispering Door is a story about Wallace Price, who was not a kind man in his life. The story even starts off when he is firing a woman who is the sole source of income for her family. So we know right off the bat that he is just not a very great person. Unfortunately, he does die pretty quickly in the book by a heart attack and he finds May the Reaper at his funeral and begs her to bring him back to life so that he can finish all of the work that he has left undone at his job. But unfortunately, May cannot do that, and she takes him to a tea shop that is owned by Hugo Freeman, the ferryman. Wallace is not quite ready to cross over and be ferried over to whatever comes next, so he stays put in the tea shop, and there he meets Apollo the ghost dog and Nelson, the ghost grandfather of Hugo Freeman. While Wallace is at the tea shop, they all start to form a bond, especially Wallace and Hugo, but unfortunately, it is a hard bond to form because Wallace is a ghost and Hugo is a human. So that is a point of heartbreak in that relationship. But Wallace does try his best while he is there to make the most of his life and try and become a better person in his afterlife than he ever was in his living life. This is just overall a heartbreaking story, but a beautiful story about life and death and grief, grieving for others, grieving for yourself, and grieving for a life that you might not have ever lived. It is a beautiful, whimsical story about life after death and that maybe our lives don't just end when we pass away. So you're probably wondering what order you should be reading TJ Klune books in, and honestly, you can pick however you want to, but I just thought it would be fun to make a guide for people who want a little bit more stability and structure in how they are picking their TJ Klune books. So let's start off with what I'm going to call the Holy Trinity. We have Under the Whispering Door, The House in the Cerulean Sea, and The Extraordinaries plus Flash Fire. These books are what I would say would be the most successful to most people. I feel like these ones are going to be the ones that on average most people are going to at least like, if not absolutely love. I feel that all three of these can be read by people of any ages and they will all gain something from them. So you can read these in any order, start with one, try the next, and I feel like like for the most part, you are going to find something that you will love within all three of these. But let's say that you have already read all three of these and you want to delve a little bit deeper into some of TJ Klune's older indie works. So let's start off with Under the Whispering Door. I would say to go and try out the Green Creek series. It is one of his most popular series and it also carries on that angstier tone that Under the Whispering Door does. Since Under the Whispering Door has a lot of discussion of grief, I think that the angstiness in the Green Creek series will complement it pretty well because the entire Green Creek series does have a lot of angst and sad parts, but it also does have some humor like in Under the Whispering Door. So I feel like this might be a great segue for you if you enjoyed the angst in Under the Whispering Door. And if you do choose to read that series and absolutely love it, then you can also read Into This River I Drown or Withered and Seer because they are definitely heavier on the angst. They are some of TJ Klune's more angsty stories. So if you just want to go on a path of angst, this is the order that I would say to read them. As for The House in the Cerulean Sea, if you really enjoyed the found family aspect as well as the beautiful, amazing children in this, I would say that you should pick up The Bones Beneath My Skin. It doesn't have as much whimsy and magic that is in The House in the Cerulean Sea, but it does still have a really beautiful found family within it, as well as a really great child character. She is, she's so cute. I love her so much. And with The Bones Beneath My Skin, you can segue into two ways. You can go down over to Into This River I Drown because this is set in the same world and has a crossover character. Or you can continue on the path of just amazing children and read Bear Otter and the Kid. This story is a little bit angstier, but it does have a really cute child who is just so smart and 
I really enjoyed him as a character. He was probably my favorite part of that one, but it is definitely not as whimsical and magical as House in the Cerulean Sea, but again, it has really cute characters and a really beautiful found family. So for kids and family, go down this middle path. <laughs> as for what to read when you're finished with the Extraordinaries, I would definitely say try out the Tales from Verenia. If you love the way that Nick was so chaotic and quirky and just always talked without thinking and was just constantly rambling on and on and on about everything that crossed his mind, you will love Sam in The Tales from Verenia. He is so similar. I remember reading that series and thinking, wow, this is Nick. This is Nick just grown up. <laughs> the Tales from Verenia has magic and wizards where the Extraordinaries had superheroes and superpowers. So I feel like this is a really decent segue in, but I will say that the Tales from Verenia is very explicit. It is not meant for children. It is probably not even meant for teenagers. So if you are a teenager, I would get parent parental um, approval because I don't want to be responsible for corrupting you. But to finish off this path of humor, I would say you can either pick Tell Me It's Real or How to Be a Normal Person. I personally would go for How to Be a Normal Person over Tell Me It's Real, but they are both really funny, filled with lots of jokes, and they have also a lot of good found family. That is something that TJ Klune is just excellent at. So this is my current official guide to TJ Klune. If you want to go down a path of angst, a path of found family, or a path of humor. If you would like to see this map in more detail, I have it linked in the description so you can use it and change it as you please. So you might be wondering what my official ranking of TJ Klune books are and what my number one pick for his books would be. So without further ado, we are going to start at the very bottom with Tell Me It's Real. In this book, I just felt like the jokes did not land. They do not hold up today and I think that it it borderlines on being offensive so this is not one that I personally would recommend to too many people but it is humorous and it has pretty decent characters but I just don't think that the jokes are I don't think they're okay in our second to last place we have bear otter and the kid now this is TJ Klune's first book so I do want to try and be a little bit kind to it but at the same time it is filled with angsty man pain and at some points it just gets a little tedious to read bear being so in his feels so I found that book a little bit grating to read and I actually almost DNF that one right above that we have withered and sear this is probably the most forgettable TJ Klune book that I have read. I had to reread the back of it a few times to remember the events that happened in it. I do think it was spooky and it was entertaining when I was reading it. I flew through it in probably one to two days, but I just don't think it has a lot of depth to it that makes me think about it over and over again. Next up would be Into This River I Drown. Again, this is a really heavy on the angst book and there are some character deaths in it that I had a really hard time reading. It was just a really hard book to stomach, especially with some of the betrayals that happened in that one too. So it was beautifully written and it is a great homage to TJ Klune's father, but it was just heavy on the angst and I cried way too much with that one. So it is just, it's a hard one to read. The pain of it makes it lower on this list. Right above that would be How to Be a Normal Person. I thought this one was funny. It's like right in the middle ground. It is easy to read. The characters are lovable. It's just solidly middle ground for me. And above that would be The Bones Beneath My Skin. I absolutely love this book. It is one of my five star reads for TJ Klune, but it just has to be a little bit lower than some of my other favorites. He has so many great books to read, but this one I am putting in the middle even though I did absolutely love it. Following those, we have The Extraordinaries and Flashfire. I love this series so much. The characters are so precious. I absolutely love Nick and Seth. They are my everything. So of course this one is in the top for me. I just think that this one is so fun to read, so easy to read, and I think so many people will love this series. Right above those two is Under the Whispering Door. It is a beautiful story. I absolutely love everything that it did. It made me cry so hard so many times and I just think it is so magical and also because I have lost my grandmother this year it was a nice refreshing story about grief where all of the other ones that I've read this year have just broken me down and this one made me feel a little bit hopeful about life after death and everything. In third place for me would be the Green Creek series. Wolf Song was the first ever TJ Klune book that I read and I had a massive book hangover from it and I still think about those characters and those relationships to this day. That entire series just lives in my soul. I can still picture everything that I pictured while I was reading it. It's just 
it hits hard. It has so much angst, but so much humor and a lot of love and great characters and it just has everything that I could hope for in a story. And I, yeah, it has to be in my top three for sure. In my second place would be the Tales from Verania series. This is it's everything. It is so funny. If you just want to laugh out loud the entire time and have some moments of heartbreak and angst, this is the perfect story for you. These characters are everything. They are so funny. The way that they care about each other and take care of each other is just beautiful. I want to be the, their friends. I want to meet them someday. I want to live in this world and have Gary and Tiggy as my BFFs. So if there was a series I had to recommend everybody read from TJ Klune, it would be this one, even though I know some of the jokes might be a touch offensive here and there, but it is so good. It's so good. I love it. I love Sam. I love Ryan. Oh. I need to reread that series. But finally, in my top plays has to be The House in the Cerulean Sea. It was the second TJ Klune book I read right after I read Wolf Song, and it just brings me so much joy. I was a teacher for five years. I taught seven-year-olds, and this story, I saw so many of my students in those kids, and I just loved every single one of the kids in this story and the love story that is told in it and the message of acceptance and love and found family. It's just so beautiful. It is just a warm hug in a book, so of course it has to be in my number one spot. So that is the official ranking of all of the TJ Klune books that I have read so far. It is definitely subject to change the more I reread these books, because I know for sure that there are a few that I will definitely come back to. And any new books that he comes out, I'm just going to eat them all up. But you have basically come to the end of this video, so I will let you see the outro now. <laughs> Hello! If you have made it this far in the video, please comment down below. Hornless unicorns are just horses, because I would like to summon the wrath of my pals, Gary and Tiggy, so I can finally meet them someday. <laughs> But in all seriousness, I hope that you enjoyed this video. Every single thing that I can think of is in the description, as well as any graphics that I have used and the spreadsheet that I created that lists all of the warnings, as well as any tags that I would use if these books were on AO3. So it has everything in the description for you down below. Go ahead, click around, use what you want to. And I just really hope that you enjoyed this video and found it informative and helpful and that you are now inspired to pick up some other TJ Klune books that you had not had on your radar before. So if there are any books that you now want to read, please tell me in the comments below and just thank you so so much for watching. I really had fun making this video. Bye!